Greetings. In this episode of Killing with Cubase, we're going to talk about... Damn it, I did it again. <laughs> the Cubase Stereo Editor. I'm just going to read this damn thing as it's easier to... I need a teleprompter is what I need. Okay. Okay. All right, sports fans. Uh, in this edition, we are going to talk about um, the, t the stereo editor um, in Cubase. And the stereo editor is basically in, more or less intended to be a replacement for SoundForge, um, among other things. But um, a lot of you, the young guys really feel a reliance um, on... Um, the stereo editor, and, and to be honest, I don't use this thing that much. And we're talking about this deal here. Um, it allows you to manipulate one track, but the, the, I guess the thing I hate most about it is it's destructive. And uh, meaning, if you cut a piece out or manip do whatever you do, it's going to save that into the file. And uh, I generally um, re uh, highly regret. Uh, the decisions I make on an early mix and end up doing something totally different on the final mix. So I really like the idea of being able to undo all the all the bull crap that I add on onto it. So for that reason alone, I'm not gigantic on this thing. Um, and a good example, I think a lot of people would, would cut. The first thing they would do, like this is electric guitar track here, and let's hear hear what I got going here. Okay, so that's, that's your high gain metally kind of screamo guitar. Sorry, I'm just dragging dragging ass this morning. Um, probably a little bit gained out, but what are you gonna do? Anyway, um, you'll, of course you'll notice the gain or the, the noise at the beginning, and their electric guitars always have noise. I don't know of any way around that. And so what we do in in modern recording land is I would avoid the stereo editor altogether, and I would just uh, push three. And cut, and then five to erase, and draw a little bit of fade thing in there, and so noise problem solved. So uh, that's my general philosophy on the thing, and so I, I think that a lot of people, like I said, would reach for the stereo editor first, which is right here, and you can see how these little 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 pieces of audio in, in Cubase are called an event, and we can go ahead and show that and uh, put that back in there. Now, uh, one thing with the stereo editor um, is it's got this solo button, um, which means right now I have the track soloed anyway, but if you push this S when you open the, the track in the two-track editor, um, it would be it would solo just that track, but otherwise it's going to play whatever you're mixed, so you'll hear it in context. It's really easy to open up, not realize what that button is, and then open up a track, and then... Um, Say, hey, where's the rest of the damn mix at? What happened? So, anyway, uh, just keep that in mind. Um, but, see, you could just go in there and you could highlight this thing. And then uh, Cubase, and you got to go back to these top. For some reason, it seems more intuitive to have the menu here, but whatever. Um, and they have audio, uh, the audio menu here, uh, process. And we could do, like, gain, and you can pull it all the way down to, to negative affinity or whatever. I guess when it goes down to minus 50, close enough. Anyway, so you could do that, and it would technically rule it out. But then you have the risk of, of a uh, of a little clip, a little click sound. Let's see if it does it. Oh, I didn't hear it that time, but who knows. But anyway, this is just, it's, it's one way to go, but I don't really see much purpose in it. Because I would rather just, it's faster to me to hit 3, 5, and delete the thing. And, and also, particularly if we're working with multiple tracks... Uh, this song's a little bit screwy, but um, in terms of the guitar arrangement, but uh, okay, so we'll, we'll hard pan these like they're intended, and we'll, we'll listen to both. Here's a good example. What you'll notice is um, they did some kind of you know whatever jot and then stop and jot and then that's 
And that sounds a little fake there, but in the in context, it works. The song is a mix, so I don't even want to show you what I've got right now because it's not even anywhere close right now. But and some asshole will will go, "Why well, that doesn't sound very good?" Well, it's not done, jerk. Anyway, um, but what, I, what I'm talking about here is, is when you edit in Cubase, you can do um, like let's say I'll highlight these two tracks, and we, at the same time I press three for the cut button, and I can do this and then the and then go in and delete them all and the edit points whoops the edit points will be identical and for tight guitar tracks um they should be oops well i'm an idiot not woke up yet anyway uh those points will be um in sync so it's it's faster i just did you know two tracks and i could have done 10 tracks just as fast um as i did right there so or, or the folder track i could have done them all at once so Anyway, there's a lot of options in Cubase, and it really makes this notion of a stereo editor kind of um, like an old school thing. And there's probably uh, purposes to it that I'm not thinking of, but um, generally speaking, I don't get that wound up about the thing. Now, uh, other things in the two-track editor, let's see. Here's a vocal track. I don't want to listen to it um, just because, but uh, this particular take wasn't very good of a to name any oh whatever anyway uh we have this pitch and warp thing which is their very audio deal um in cubase which is, is basically a version of melodyne um melodyne might be a little better and a little more a lot more expensive but um and different but it doesn't integrate near as, as well with cubase unless they change something so um what that basically does is you can see this this particular pitch is fairly interesting and then so you can do the quant straighten the pitch out and it will sound I mean, there, there's the straight line. Um, and then the quantize kind of uh, forces it to go onto uh, an exact note a little bit better, um, I guess. I don't, I don't, I, I'm kind of just use this sparingly. The cool thing about this is it is non destructive, so um, you don't have to um, commit to anything too hardcore. And there's, there's other features in here, and I, and I don't use these, use these kind of things very often, and so. I'm not going to get into a big deal about them, but there are some cool things to play with here. Um, highly recommended you check the manual out for these particular things for manipulating vocals, or um, you can really get into like the even the timing of of a uh, yeah. What am I doing wrong here? Uh, well, I'm an idiot. I don't. I've got. To figure, oh, it's not even on. You can really get into the the timing of a. Uh, of a vocal and stretching notes out and making them long and that that I find very useful because singers notoriously have not so good timing in my world so um, anyway make sure you play with that but like I said this whole stereo editing thing as a whole I don't I think most young guys overestimate how effective it is but that doesn't mean um, you can't do a lot of cool things you there are times when you do need to put like maybe if you have a, a really bad DSing uh, problem uh, you can go ahead and Access your plugins and um, uh, and take care of that within the on the track itself, like that actual wave file you recorded. Um, I sometimes have issues with uh, getting like all my plugins here. Like I don't I, for some reason my um, my UAD plugins aren't here among others. So my third party plugins. So that's probably some glitch I need to fix. But uh, so there is some useful things. I, I especially use this one for. Um, uh, reverse reverb situations and like to do that um, you would highlight a little piece of the track man oh crap everything's weird you'd highlight a piece of the track and then you have this other thing called process let you do fade ins and fade outs and various little functions um, and so you could actually reverse the track and see now it's saying hey we're gonna we're gonna cause some problems with that very audio junk and you know whatever but and that would reverse it and this isn't really a reverse reverb template. Basically, it's just showing you what's there. And to get to the stereo editor, you just need to double click on an audio file. So, again, not something I spent a million years on, but probably something you need to kind of add to your list of uh, things to explore and see if that fits your way of working. Okay, guys, thanks. Bye.